I know we haven't done hard integral for a while, so let's go ahead and do a hard integral for today. We are going to integrate from 0 to power over 2 of x over tangent x. And this question is from the Berkeley Math Tournament in the year of 2020. This is actually the last question of the calculus part of the test. So, yeah, it must be really challenging. But anyway though, you know the deal, please pause the video and try this first. Done? Okay, let's see. First off, I wanted to tell you this is an improper integral by dust converge, so we'll just compute it. And do not try to integrate x over tangent x because that's not elementary just like this shirt. <sighs> so I'm pretty sure you guys can agree with me that the tangent x on the bottom is the annoying, annoying part, right? Is it possible for us to somehow multiply by a tangent x so that they can cancel each other out? Of course, I'm not saying multiply the a tangent x on the top and tangent x on the bottom, no. Well, check this out. On the top right here, we have x, but we can purposely write the s inverse tangent of tangent x. And x is from 0 to power by 2, so this is actually good. So this is how we can produce a tangent x on the top, right? But the problem is that this is instead of the inverse tangent. And of course, the original has that tangent on the bottom. I know my birthday wish was to cancel this and that, but no, it didn't come true. I cannot do that. So now let's see how we can get this to work though. Well, check this out. What we are going to do is, we are going to put like a, what the so-called parameter here, and let's use a for it. So it's like a new variable for now, all right? And then what we are going to do is, just look at a as the variable and differentiate that. And then by the chain rule, well, we will have to multiply by this, which is considered to be a constant in the a world. And once we multiply by that tangent x, this and that will cancel out, and then we'll hope for the best from there. So this process is called the differentiation under the integral sign, or just integrate by a uh, parameter translation, that kind of thing. And I will tell you though, if you want to go from here to here, or, or like directly, I will say this is really hard. But it is really hard because this is the last question, right? Let me just put on the steps that we are going to take right here for you guys. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are actually going to consider, I will call that like an integral function. We are going to rewrite this with that. And the variable that we are looking at is a, not x. So I'm just going to call that to be a function because it's integral that's put on capital I. And then a is our variable. And we will just have the integral going from 0 to pi over 2. Do not put on x. But rather put this down, we have the inverse tangent of a times the original tangent of x over tangent x. I know, dx. So this is our integral. Well, we can also look at that as the integral function. So what we are going to do first is we are going to get i prime of a meaning we are going to differentiate this equation with respect to a. And you might be wondering why we want to do that. The reason is because if you want to take up this integral by integrating with respect to x first, that's not possible. So let's change the water a little bit. Let's differentiate this with respect to a, and then we'll get an expression in terms of a, right? And then step two, we are going to integrate the expression and get i of a. So, I know, it's like once we have this, so I'll just tell you this is, we differentiate this with respect to a, and then integrate it, right, integrate the result from part one, and with respect to a, with respect to a, so that we can actually get i of a. Guess what? We just changed the order of differentiation and integration, because originally it was integration first. But if we differentiate first and then integrate, we can still end up with a nice result. And then, once we have i of a, this right here is going to be super nice. You want to know the answer now? Well, no, you have to watch until the end. Once we have i of a by doing these two process, if we want to figure that out, we just have to make sure i a is equal to 1. So we just have to get i of 1. And that will be the answer for that. So step one, step
step two, step three. If the question was written this way, of course, it would be so much easier. But you know, this is a Berkeley map tournament question. So I'm not going to go so easy on you guys, right? And if you guys have done some differential equations, then I will tell you this is almost like it has similar flavor with like an exact differential equation where you differentiate and you integrate back and then boom, everybody happy. All right, that's the thought process. Now, here, let's go ahead and get to work. So right here, I'm just going to start everything from scratch. Scratch or fresh, doesn't matter. Define i of a to be the integral going from 0 to pi over 2. And then on the top, let's put down inverse tangent of a times original tangent of x over tangent x dx. Step one, we are going to look at this and differentiate that with respect to a. So I will just put this down right here, d dA, like so. So on the left hand side, we will indeed get i prime of a. That's the notation for that. And now when we differentiate this integral, let's just go ahead and differentiate the inside first. And to do so, that's called the differentiation under the integral sign. And we'll just look at the integral on the outside first. And then put this differentiation inside, it becomes a partial derivative because inside here we have like a and x. So let's use the partial derivative symbol to make everybody happy. And then we look at this, which is the, I will just write this everything in red and inverse tangent of a tangent x over tangent x. You see, differentiate this and then dx on the outside like this. So now let's go ahead and focus on this. So ladies and gentlemen, this will be the integral going from zero to pi over two. When we differentiate this with respect to a, tangent x is just a constant. So we can put it on the outside here. We have one over tangent x. And then when we differentiate inverse tangent, guess what? We get one over one plus parentheses with whatever this is inside. You know, typical thing. And then don't forget the chain rule. We get inside and multiply by the derivative of a tangent x. A is the variable, tangent x is just a constant, so we multiply by this tangent x. Aha! This and that cancel out very, very nicely, and of course, on the very end here, don't forget the dx. So all in all, we get the integral going from 0 to pi over 2, and then we can look at this, it's just 1 over 1 plus a squared, well, let's just keep it as a tangent x squared, and then dx. All right, that's good, but can we finish this though? Because remember earlier we were talking about, we want to differentiate this with respect to a first, and then we, now you see we end up with a much better integral, kind of, because this is still hard. We should finish this so we can end up with an expression in terms of a, then we can proceed to step two. All right, so keep this in mind. I will have to erase this now. Uh, think about how we can integrate that. You know, if the a is not here, this question is so easy because one plus tangent square is just secant square, and then one over secant square just cosine square, and then blah blah blah. Okay, but we do have the a. A is not one yet. You have to deal with a at the moment. So how do we do this? Well, when we have an integral, if you just have tangent x, it's not enough. What's its best friend? Secant square x. Let's invite it to be here too, but how? Let me show you. I am going to just multiply the top by secant square x and also the bottom by secant square x. Why? Well, you'll see. This right here will give us the integral going from zero to pi over two. And then on the top, we have that secant square x over this. I'll keep it as 1 plus a tangent x and then square. I know this is secant square. I should put it down, but no. Because when we have a secant square x, I want to pair this up with a dx. And then the rest shall be in terms of tangent x so that we can just do a u substitution. So with this secant square, I'm going to purposely write it as thanks to the trig identity, 1 plus tangent square x. 
And notice that this and that they are almost similar, but no. And sorry, I forgot the parentheses should be right here. It's a wrongly a tangent x. Now we are in business because we can just do a use up and we will just do a use up. So right here, let's just go ahead and uh, let's do this like that. So right here, I'm just going to put this down real quick. Let u equal to tangent x. Just kidding. Let u equal to tangent x. And then du is nicely equal to secant square x dx. And we can take this integral to the u world. So this right here will give us the integral. Don't forget, x is going from 0 to pi over 2. When x is 0, we put it here. u is going to be tangent 0, which is just 0. And then we will also have to put pi over 2 into tangent x. But tangent of pi over 2 is not defined. Don't worry. As I told you, this is the improper integral. Technically, we should have take the limit. So we will have to say that's the limit as x approaching pi over 2 from the left hand side. So that's why we have the pi over 2 with a minus. And when you do that, right, tangent x, huh, tangent x, a little bit to the left, right, you see the curve it will be going straight up. So you will be going to infinity. All right, so we did a change of the bound. Now, this is the du, and then we have 1. And then 1 plus au squared. So I'm just going to put this down, a squared, u squared. And then, let me just put the u as the red. And tangent x is the u, so 1 plus u squared. Oh my goodness. And then du. Because right, this this just the u, so that is very nice. Oh my god! So what do we do next? You have two ways. One, you can do cat distribution, and I'm going to give that into you guys. I'm not going to edit this video because I, I like my videos now being just like no edit. Ideally speaking, unless I really messed up. Or we'll have to give you guys some like screenshots. But anyway, though, this right here, I'll show you guys how I can do it. Right? We can actually do a partial fraction decomposition. And you might be thinking, hey, this is the irreducible quadratic terms. No good, but don't worry, check this out. I am going to just integrate from 0 to infinity. We will have the first fraction right here with 1 plus a square u square and then plus the other fraction, 1 plus u squared du. Put a parenthesis if you would like, but I'm not going to. What does it go right here? What goes right here? Check this out. Eh? Check this out. Cabra method still works. Even though we have u squared, but thankfully, this is u squared, likewise, that's also u squared. So if you would like, you can just imagine that we have like t is equal to u squared, that kind of thing. Or you can also imagine plugging i into u, but this right here is easier. So to figure this out, right, to figure this out, we go back to the original and cover the same denominator. And then we have to ask ourselves, 1 plus a squared u squared, how can this be equal to 0? And then we are solving for u squared. Put this to the other side, divide this to the other side, we see that u squared is just equal to negative 1 over a squared, right? So u squared has to be that, and then we put this right here, and that will be this. So this number here is going to be 1 over 1 plus negative 1 over a squared. That's the u squared part. So this is the cover method, and we just look at u squared as a variable itself. And then, of course, we can simplify this real quick, multiply the top and bottom by a squared. So we see that this is a squared over a squared minus 1. Good. Don't worry, you have another chance to practice. What goes here? Cover this up. 1 plus u squared, how can we make this equal to 0? We have to make sure that u squared is equal to negative 1. And then we put negative 1 into this u squared. So we are looking at 1 over 1 plus a squared times this negative 1. So of course, the result is just 1 over 
1 minus a square. All right, so yeah, that's the cover up method, even though we have a re reducible quadratic. But thankfully, like seriously, thankfully, there's not a u to the first power. If so, it'll be a little bit more complicated. But anyway, though, here's the thing. This is a squared minus 1. This is 1 minus a squared. I'm going to just multiply this by a negative, and I'm going to multiply this by, I'm going to change this to a negative so that I can reverse the order of the subtraction, so that I can put that on the very outside, 1 over a squared minus 1. And then we can look at the integral from 0 to infinity. And this right here, I'll just keep it as a squared over 1 plus a squared u squared, and then minus, and then this is just 1 over 1 plus u squared du. Now we can integrate. So we still have this all the way at the front. Integrate this. Firstly, we have that a squared. Secondly, this right here, I'm going to just change this to a u and then square. And then we can do a substitution. Maybe that's the w equal to this. So we will just see 1 because a squared is in front. 1 over 1 plus w squared. Integral for that is inverse tangent of w which is a u so we have a u but we have to divide it by the derivative a u with respect to u so it's just one of a here, here and then integrate this this is just going to be inverse tangent of u cool very very cool and then ladies and gentlemen we are going to integrate from zero to infinity all right so here we have that one over a squared minus one firstly that's cancel this out. Now, here's a small part. When we put infinity to here, a times infinity, is it infinity? Almost. Depends. Depends if a is positive or not. Because if a is negative, then we can go to negative infinity. So what do we have to do? In fact, here, once we reach this point, we will actually have to go back and then just give a condition. Remember, the original integral is going to be a it's going to be i of 1. So once we set this up, we'll just have to indicate that we are going to consider a is greater than 0 for this right here. So that we can legitimately say a positive number times infinity will give us infinity inside. And inverse tangent of infinity, the limit for that is just pi over 2. So don't forget we have the a though. So the first part is a times pi over 2. And then you put infinity to here. That's nice. It's just minus pi over 2. So this is what happens when we put infinity into the u's. And then when we put 0 here, inverse tangent of 0 is just 0 all gone. Likewise, this is also all gone, so we have minus 0. Cool. And then we can simplify this a little bit. This is 1 over a squared minus 1. Factor out the pi over 2. And then this is a minus 1. And of course, we can simplify this Factor this as a minus 1, a plus 1. So all in all, we have pi over 2 times 1 over a plus 1. Yes, no, we are not done yet. This is what? This is just i of i prime of a. We do have a final result, right? So here's the thing. We differentiate this guy, and then we saw the result. So I'm going to just come back here and then erase. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see. What we did earlier was we found out i prime of a is equal to pi over 2 times 1 over a plus 1. And what did we say earlier? This is only step 1. Now we'll go to step 2. We are going to integrate both sides with respect to a. Right, so let's put on da here and then da here. So that the left hand side, this dot dot dot, but anyway. The left hand side is going to be i of a, good. The right hand side, this is nice and easy, pi over 2. And then we can integrate this, and parentheses is okay because a is greater than 0, a plus 1. And don't forget that we will have to add the plus c. Don't ever forget the plus c. But what's the c though? Well, you know what? This is the exciting part. i of a is what? It's our original function here. So what we can do is just the following. We can say that. We know this right here must be equal to this. 
and this result is equal to that, right? So if you would like, we can just write it down one more time to make everything super clear. Integral from 0 to power over 2 inverse tangent of a times regular tangent of x over tangent x. Yeah, this whatever integral that you want, it's actually just equal to this, which is pi over 2 ln of a plus 1 plus c. But we just have to find out what c is. Don't worry. Let's let a equal to a very nice number. Let's say 0. So technically right here, I am going to say a is greater than or equal to 0 because I need to use 0 as well. When we do that, put 0 into here, 0 times tangent is just 0, inverse tangent of 0 is 0, the whole thing is 0, and when we integrate 0 from 0 to power over 2 is 0. So the left hand side will give us 0, and then the right hand side, when we put 0 in here, ln1 is 0, 0 times this is 0, plus c is equal to c. So c is equal to 0. Done. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer for that is when a is equal to 1. Right, we are moving to step 3 now. So, i of 1, which is going to be the integral that we are looking for, is 0 to pi over 2, x over inverse tangent of x. Because when we put 1 in here, they cancel out very nicely. This is equal to, we put a 1 in here, so we have pi over 2 ln 2. C, hey, hey, it was equal to 0. Done. Pi over 2 times ln 2. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Whew. Very, very nice, huh? Yeah, so again, this question is from the Berkeley Map Tournament. And um, I will be there this year, November 5th, 2022. Saturday at UC Berkeley campus, and we will be giving out scholarships to the winners. $1,000 for the first place. So hope to see you guys there. Right? Make sure you go register. The links will be in the description. And if you are also interested in sponsoring Berkeley Math Tournament, check out the links in the description as well. That's it.